Two weeks ago, Alexander Yusik and Derek Chisora kicked off our Wembley residency. Tonight, we switched to an historic women's triple header. Unified champion Terry Harper, undisputed champion Katie Taylor and title contender Rachel Ball all top a six-fight bill here at Wembley Arena. Um, what a night we've got in store. What a night for women's boxing, Derek. Yeah, fantastic night. Uh, topped off by the legend that is Katie Taylor. Mm. Done so much for the women's game and you can see how she's transcended it to another level and it's three good fights. Um, it really is. Yeah. Um, I'm really looking forward to this one, Chris. It's eight years ago, amazingly, she won Olympic gold in London. I was yep. lucky enough to be there that night. I can, I can remember it like it was yesterday, mm. such was the noise. Four years ago, she turned professional at this very venue. And tonight, she arrives as undisputed champion with all four belts and the rigging magazine title to, to defend as well. Incredible. Um, Terry Harper supporting her as well, one of the rising stars of women's boxing. What a year she's had under weird circumstances yeah. as well. Yeah, and, and possibly could be fight of the night Yeah. Uh, against Fanders. She's... Uh, we know how good Terry Harper can be when she's on the back foot. She, she's got great boxing ability, but she likes to get stuck in. She can punch, and Fanders is very aggressive. And if Terry does get drawn into a fight, it could be a cracker. Talking to Rachel Ball last night about Katharina Tanda, she's a very, very yeah. good hit, very hard too. So looking forward to that. Rachel yeah. Ball, of course, big opportunity for her tonight. Um, WBC interim uh, belt on the line due to those weight issues as we spoke about. But Rachel Ball, great, great to have her back as well. Yeah, and it just shows you in this current climate, especially in the women's game as well, one win mm. can catapult you into a world title shot. We see how well she's done against Shannon Courtney and uh, now, unfortunate what happened with the weight, etc. But, you know, she's so close to fulfilling her dream. She's and uh, it's another good fight. Uh, Guanini, I don't know if the, the viewers know much about her, but I didn't know a great deal, but I've been impressed with her. She's, uh, she's a little pocket rocket. You know, she's very good. She's powerful. She's good on her feet, quick hands. And... Though Rachel Ball has the physical advantages, the size, the reach, uh, and the height, she's um, she's used to that, Guanini. She's used to fighting to all her opponents, so it's going to be a good fight, that. Certainly is. Well, that triple header is backed up by three undercard fights, which boast plenty of intrigue tonight. All the action starts six o'clock on Facebook. Tony Belly's charge, Tom Whittaker steps up against the 7-1 and one Jermaine Springer in our opener. Then at 7pm, the action starts live on Sky Sports. It's been a tough few weeks for Cash Farouk, uh, but finally the Scottish bantamweight makes his matchroom debut against Angel Aviles. WBA Continental title is on the line. Then John Doherty is in his first scheduled 10-rounder tonight. He's talked the talk, will he walk the walk against Jack Cullen later on. Then a slight change to our fourth fight of the night. Uh, as we said, uh, Rachel Ball and Horgelina Granini will now test the uh, WBC interim super bantamweight title following yesterday's weigh and then our chief support, Terry Harper, defends the WBC and IBO World Super Featherweight titles against Katharina Tanders. And then it's the main event, Katie Taylor's 11th straight world title fight. The Irish Heroes' undisputed titles are on the line against 13-0 Miriam Gutierrez. Well, our first guest uh, is a handful of accredited media in the bubble. I think he's your first match from bubble as well, Michelle Joy Phelps. Yeah, hi. Uh, I don't know whether or not I should talk or sing. I feel like I'm so <laughs> Go on, sing. give us a you number. Missed Come on, you missed the karaoke night. You missed the hell of a single. Like, and I'm like, hi, everyone. I think, I think after <laughs> Darren's performance fans. and a few others, you, you might... Um, well, you, you can't agree? do worse than me. You can't no. do worse than oh, me. Oh, I promise you, I can. can you? Do, well, do you know how you, you cover up your bad voice? How? It's just by hum? pure enthusiasm. And that's all I'd done. I a lot jumped of around. In yours. There was a lot of movement. There was. Movement. There was. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I burnt about half a stone off, I think. Yeah. I'm just grateful we didn't have like karaoke night here in the bubble because I, I know for a fact I would have been stuck on someone's phone as blackmail. <laughs> yeah, that would have been it. I know for a fact. So. That Are been you it. doing any more? What? Any what? more fight? Ca yeah, any more bubbles? I mean, I hope so. You hope because so. Because there is going to be a karaoke night. I oh, don't know if I'm. Uh, is that uh, an exclusive there? Is there? Well, I didn't know that. Yeah, well, you haven't sang yet. Yeah, I know. Look, so. if you give me enough alcohol, I'm great. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll listen. Bring the house down. If, if that hasn't sold it, then I don't know what has. <laughs> um, so you you started behind the gloves nine yes. years ago. Yeah, nine Incredible. years ago. How crazy! You know, I didn't even think about it until Coogan did his tenure. Yeah. And then when I was filming my video for Coogan, I was like, Oh my God! Nine I'm right years. behind you. I can't even believe it's just flown by. It's insane. Yeah. It really just started as a hobby. I just started. Believe it or not, I used to have like a blo a Sony bloggy camera. Do you know what those are? No. no. <laughs> Too long ago. Um, they're like this big, and they have like a flip cam, and I taped it. Taped. I didn't even have a tripod. I taped it to my mirror, and then I just started talking into it, and then I just put it on my YouTube channel, which had like 10 subscribers, which were like my family. Wow. And I would just make these videos, and then Box I would wake up, and boxing. there'd be thousands of views, and I'm like, really? Was it always boxing? Always boxing. Always boxing, mm -hmm. wow. Incredible. Yeah. So nine years They're later. They're not on my channel anymore, by the way, so don't even bother. Why? 
Yeah. I've removed them. Everyone's out scrolling <laughs> through again. We've got to find them. We've got to no find way. them. Yeah. 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 Get rid of all the weird stuff at the beginning. Yeah, for sure. Mm. Um, this must have been, I guess, one of the most challenging years you've ever had. Yeah. I mean, you know, being full flow, the boxing schedule's been thick and fast, and then suddenly the whole world stops, the economy pauses, and then boxing for the first time in years it is completely cancelled for six mm -hmm. months. Mm -hmm. How has it affected you? How has it affected the business? If I'm completely honest, uh, for a moment there, I thought I was going to have to walk away. Really? I was terrified. I thought, how did I spend nine years of my life so invested in something for it to potentially just be over just like that? I'm very dependent on views. I wasn't getting any views. There was nothing to put out. So we went from having, we were doing amazing. We were doing like six million views a month, which is pretty decent. Yeah. Six million views a month to maybe off of old videos just below a million wow. so in revenue we dropped 73 percent like i had to dip so far into my savings that i came out with nothing so i'm literally feeling it like most people are it was a very eye-opening experience for me made me think about how i need to sort of plan take take a different plan moving forward because like you just don't proof. know yeah you just don't yeah. know what's going to happen and i also realized that you know, there is no sort of stability in YouTube, and that's what I depend on for everything. So it's been an eye-opening experience, much like everyone else. I took a hit just like the rest of the world. So. But you did get an interview with me yesterday, so that, <laughs> surely that's bringing in about 15 I million views. 15,000, sure. <laughs> I appreciate it, yeah. So it was a scary time, you know, and it's still sort of rebuilding. I'm glad to, I'm thankful to be back working yeah i'm very thankful trust me just as of the end of last year i was like oh i'm exhausted you know you're never gonna hear me saying that again yeah. i am so <laughs> grateful to be busy working getting whatever little nuggets i can get at this point yeah, yeah. Uh, i guess nice to be back because you've been doing a few bits over zoom and i know we've all tried to do that kind of stuff but mm. it's not the same it's not it, you can you can try and create that rapport with somebody but you should not don't get what you get when you're face to face with people do you? yeah no absolutely not everyone loves that they love the engagement you don't know what's going to happen when you're sitting next to somebody and you're bantering you know what i mean that's your guys's language you're right bantering yeah, <laughs> yeah you know yeah so you just you just sort of get a completely different feel for someone mm. and i'm sure it's the same for the person you're interviewing i mean imagine sitting in front of a screen and it's the same thing again and again and again you mm. know it's just regurgitated and so i find that everyone i mean did you did, would you prefer have had me sat next to you doing an interview than over a phone or over the laptop? Yeah, of course. Okay, Do it in see. person. It's a lot better. I'd yeah. done one over Zoom with, I I'm going to grass him up. It was Umar <laughs> from IFL. Uh -huh. We did an hour, hour, and he didn't press play. He no. didn't press record. <gasps> no. Tell you. Yeah, didn't press How record. How did he not realise it wasn't recording for an hour? That is yeah. classic. It's a bit of a giveaway, that little, <laughs> that little red light that flashes. <laughs> that is classic. Yeah, an hour. No. Although he has got an arm like a, a Major League Baseball pitcher. <laughs> So we'll Great arm, you, Umar. No drama at all. <laughs> um, so uh, I know you spoke to Katie Taylor yesterday. Uh -huh. You've obviously known her for a few years yeah. and done many interviews with her. Do you think she's changed at all over the last three or four years or is she pretty much the same person that you've always spoken to? No, I told her that. I said, you know, I watched a documentary that she did recently. She is still driving a Honda. She is still living very modestly. No, I'm being serious. Yeah. Like when people get more than 100 Gs in the bank, they jump up to Mercedes and they start sort of spending a lot. It's natural when you come from nothing to want to spend when you have something, right? Yeah, it's true. natural. So to see her sort of being as humble as she is, I mean, she really truly is a role model. I mean, mm -hmm. I think that so many people, even like with her, I said, what you're doing for women's boxing, you're also doing for, for me, for people like me. You know, I'm one of few in this industry mm -hmm. and you're representing for all of us. Yeah. So it's, it's such a, a great it's for, number one, I'm just happy to even be a part of this, mm. to see this, but to see what she's doing and other women in, in boxing, what they're doing is, is amazing. Yeah. I mean, I, honestly, when I started nine years ago, people used to ask me all the time, well, why don't you interview female fighters? Yeah. And I was honest. I said, well, there were never any mm. fights on the cards. There weren't. Mm. So I'm, I'm jumping from one media week into the next, and if there's no women to interview, you know, what can I do about that? I mean, I guess... You know, I could have gone more into camps, but I was so preoccupied from one yeah. week to the next. Mm. And so now we, we're seeing a surge of more female fighters and just not even just being on the card, but they're being televised. Yeah, mm. I guess as well, you, you have a good gauge of what's hot and what's not because you've got YouTube metrics and, and viewing figures and all that kind of stuff. Mm. Have you seen a kind of measurable improvement in people's interest in women's boxing through, through your channel in the last three or four years? Yeah, I think they've always been interested, but you can't be interested in something you don't know about. Yeah. Mm. So unless you're televising it, no one's knowing about it, mm. right? Mm. You're sort of like a hidden talent that no one wants to spend money on. 
So I'm grateful. I told, I told this to Adam Smith yesterday. I told this to Eddie Hearn. I said, I applaud you guys for being a few in the industry that are actually investing in women's boxing. Mm. Yeah, so mm. that's a very good point. Um, uh, Ring Magazine released their um, pound for pound ratings uh, a few weeks ago. Um, Clarissa Shields still tops the list. Katie Taylor comes in at number two. Uh, Celia Breakers is ahead of Jess McCaskill. I don't know whether that was updated since they fought. Um, where do you put Katie? Do you think she's top or do you think she's number two? It's hard to say because I've always sort of determined it based on weight, and I know not everyone does that. Yeah, of course. So it's sort of like I can't compare Clarissa Shields with Katie Taylor because, mm -hmm. I mean, there is just such a big difference there. But nonetheless, I, I don't disagree with the fact that either one of them would be in the top two. Yeah, yeah. Who's yours? Katie. <laughs> Katie. I've yeah. got Katie Taylor's firm over there, so Katie I don't Katie's want to upset her. <laughs> Katie, 100%. Clar Clarissa's aunt. So, sorry, Clarissa, you've, uh, you've lost the Barker Lloyd ratings, that's for sure. Um, lots to be decided for you going forward. I guess the, the news of, of a potential vaccine that, that looks hopeful means we can get back to some sort of normality. Please. Crowds, hopefully. Uh, and I suppose that's a, somewhat of a relief, hopefully, for you <clears throat> next year. It means you can get back to some sort of normality for the business, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm not really, I don't really want to talk about the vaccine stuff because I'm very opinionated on vaccines. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, hopefully we could see crowds sort of, I mean, I guess them allowing crowds. I'm starting to read stuff about, you know, if they have a vaccine, we might be able to see crowds back. So hopefully, I mean, we'll see what happens. Mm. I guess in two, for two factors, really, one for work and two because you're a fan. Just think of the great fights we spoke about, the great fights that we've seen that they've been brilliant. But imagine they had thousands of spectators. Well, we imagine Dillian White, yeah. Povetkin. I mean, can you imagine? Yeah, of course. I, I mean, we were lucky enough to, to go out to Breeders' Daughter Cross, weren't we? And it was so strange seeing one that would yeah. have been full of, full of people. And, we were really and, sorry, and it was so quiet. It was a decent fight, but that fight could have been better. Yeah. Yeah, the crowd probably would have taken mm. that to another level. All I know is we have the potential Anthony Joshua, Tyson Fury fight coming up. And we cannot not have a crowd yeah, for that. I, we just can't. I refuse mm. it. Yeah. <laughs> can't. Agreed. Can't. Agreed. Um, well, listen, good to have you here. Enjoy the action tonight. Yeah, thank Thanks you. Thanks for taking the time to come and join us. Thank you. And uh, make sure you check out uh, Michelle's interviews this week. Katie Taylor, she spoke to you yesterday, all on Behind the Gloves YouTube. Many thanks to Michelle. Um, now, quick turnaround, because our next guest is first up tonight. He'll be in the corner of Thomas Whittaker Hart. It's that man on the pads, Joe McAnally, on the, with the biggest man in the heavyweight division, David Price. And a uh, man, Darren, that you know very well indeed because uh, you guys were in opposite corners. Yeah, I'll tell you what, ago, I don't you? fancy holding them pads, mate. <laughs> yeah, how are the shoulders? One and all, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, oh, crikey. Yeah, it, was a, it was a good performance from David that night. Obviously, yeah. difficult for you to be on the, on the other end of it. Joe, we were just saying how well you still look, mate. You know, it was 10 years ago since you had your last professional fight. Yeah. Looked like you still do a few rounds, Dale, didn't you? Yeah, it does. Yeah. What are you weighing? Bolt off. <laughs> <laughs> I've just gotten them, I'm not telling you either. <laughs> There's been a free ball for years, so I can't disclose that, Darren. No, <laughs> no it's, it, you know, you've got to... Oh, Joe, can you step, step sorry, a tiny bit closer course, to the mic, mate? Cheers. You've got to stay in shape, literally, for your fighters. Yeah. You know, yeah. You know yourself, Darren, especially the big, the big fellas, David, Thomas Whitaker, Craig Glover. Mm. You know, the big lump, so, you know... It's true, because they, they, they watch it, didn't they? Like Tony Sims, when I was training with Tony, every, I was with him for 10 years. Yeah, every single yeah. day, yeah. he would run. I would see him running every single day. Mm, yeah. And, you know, yeah, you're a product to them, I guess, in some respects. Someone was saying to me the other day, because I've started trying to get back into it, and your kids watch you. Yeah, and definitely. it's similar, your fighters watch yeah. it, don't they? Yeah, well, you know, if you, you don't fit, it rubs off on the fighters. Yeah, it does. You know, if you, you know, you're in shape yourself. Practice what you pre preach, so to say. You went to the Junior Olympics, didn't you? Of course, yeah. What one yeah. did you go to? It was two, oh, 2001 or 2001. two. 2001 or two. I'm trying yeah. to work out. My brother yeah. went to one in, it was Louisiana, I think. It was a couple of years after me, was it yeah. Two after, was it, yeah? Uh, two or three after, yeah. So, um, Michigan. Was Mark it Michigan? Wett, you Michigan, was Mark it? Wett, yeah. 2001 or 2001. 2002. Would yeah. we know anyone um, you fought? Well, no, we got. Got beat off a Mexican kid in the um, in the semi-finals. Sal Alvarez. I couldn't even. I, cu <laughs> I, I couldn't even. I hope not. We'll I, just say uh, it was. We'll just say it you was. You know, I, I couldn't even pronounce his name to tell you the <laughs> truth. But you know, he was a good kid, good experience. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Loved Do you miss it at all? It. Do, you, do you know it's a it's a funny it's a funny old game. You know, you, you, when you when you've been a fighter yourself and you turn professional, you've got the expectations. Of, going to the top, you know, Darren went from bottom straight to the top world champion and 
love. Cheers, mate. Stop. I don't regret <laughs> nothing. I'm at the path I am. You know, yeah. I'm coaching talented fighters. I'm loving every minute, you know, on the best platforms. You know, there's a, a treble at the world title tonight. Mm. I've got one of my fighters, you know, I've put a lot of work into, along with the other coach, Declan O'Rourke. Um, I'm loving it, you know, and it is, it is, it, it was my path, you know, to be doing what I'm doing. So mm. I don't regret not fighting anymore. You know, it is what it is, yeah. you yeah. know. Um, yeah. How is Tom doing? Because obviously he had four fights in 2019, a dead slow year this year for obvious reasons. Obviously but I imagine in the last 12 months he, he's made a considerable amount of progression and you must be, as a coach, excited yeah. to, to show the sort of developments that he's made tonight. Yeah, you know, he's a, he's a top, top kid. Unfortunately, we've had the year we've had through the circumstances, you know, and, and as, as a coach, it was a bit of really, you know, you get the break, but you, everyone's grateful for the work that's coming and the development of the kids. He was a top, top amateur, you know, and I just, he's due for this step up, even though he's had a long time out, you know, he, he's fighting a good kid yeah. tonight, mm. um, you know, but he's put the work in, he's really dedicated athletes and hopefully it's the start of big things for the kids. How know? does it compare as a coach when... You've got someone like Thomas who comes from the amateur background with superb pedigree yeah. compared to someone that probably didn't have that foundation. I guess in some respects, though you're working with a tremendous talent, yeah. they're kind of stuck in their ways a little bit. Though they're successful ways, yeah. and they're, they're, that's yeah. what's been so good to them in their amateur yeah. career. Is it harder to mould them into the way you want to fight? Um, I'll be a bit, you know, on the other side of the, the paper here, Dad, and it, I don't try and mould a fighter. I try to work best with what I've got. Yeah. You know, Thomas Hart is not David Price. David Price is and Craig Glover. You know, yeah. the fighters I've had. I've had a, a, a woman world champion for two Masarika. She isn't them. Everyone's different. Mm. And, you know, I, I work where I think I can correct them and improve their game. Add to their game. Add yeah. to their game and develop them as a fighter. I'm, I'm not a believer in changing them, you mm. know, especially... I think the work from the novice fighters to these top GB kids, they do adapt a lot faster yeah. because they're literally a talent. It's, it, the, the professionals, mm. really. You know, mm. I think Thomas was Cubans, Kazakhstan's, Russians. You know, in small old back room where you know it, it was just not in there. I think and, it, they're, and they're living like yeah. professionals, aren't they? Exactly. They're in that GB setup yeah. and they're training what three times a day. You've got your diet, everything's there, so they're training That's like professionals exactly, already. Yeah. Yeah. I've just been laughing with Mike Jennings. You know, I said these are eating three, four meals a day every day. You no know, fight week. You know, once upon a time we were in. Small, I was having four, four a week. <laughs> <laughs> no. Four a month. Uh, but you know, it, it, the ultimate professionals and the yeah. games moved on. But you know, it's. These platforms are made for these kids, yep. for these GB kids. So I'm excited for them, mm. really am. Yeah, nice yeah. to see him have a step up. Um, Jermaine Springer, physical, looks yeah. very strong. We know yeah. how he fights. Tom's got an underrated inside game, though. And that's one thing I don't think people <clears throat> have necessarily seen much of yet because of the types of guys he's been in with. Yeah. And a lot of people don't necessarily watch all the amateurs. But if he does get in close uh, yeah. and manage to close that gap down with Tom, we'll, we'll actually see what he's got on the inside as well as at, at range. <clears throat> yeah, sh <laughs> I'm only joking. No, he is, yeah. You know, Thomas, <clears throat> it was one of his fundamental mistakes when he first came to me. He's six foot five. Yeah. Light heavyweight. Really heavy handed and he just wanted to be in the pocket and bang away. And he gave me a few nightmares twelve months ago where I was like, oh, you know, why? You use and He'll use that when he's got to do it, you know. He, uh, he can do everything, yeah. but he hasn't underestimated Jermaine Springer because he's a quality kid himself. He's a fantastic yeah. fighter, boxer, and, you know, we've put the own work in and it's down to him to perform yeah. tonight, you know. It's, I'm looking forward to it, I can't wait. Yeah, yeah, I am as well. Um, I spoke to the big man a few days ago. He yeah. was cooking spag bowl. <laughs> yeah. Me to cook on a spag bowl for the family. I said, good man. I said, good man. So we've got Joe McNally on next weekend. Good man, mm. see you all. Um, yeah, so yeah. how's he doing? Do you think we'll see... Again, obviously, I'm sure Pricey would have wanted to be out this year, but what, what do you think we'll see from him in the yeah. next few months? Yeah, You know, I speak to David consistently yeah. all the time. He's a good friend of mine outside the gym also. Uh, you know, we're in the gym, it's time to work. He's had, you know, it's a bit of a difficult situation with this 2020, the coronavirus. I think it has affected him a lot. I would have liked to be him. I know that he was so good against Dave Allen. Yeah. And then, you know, he took a short notice job again with Big Double. Derek. I'm, I'm not saying, you know, 
he would have won. As a coach, I would have liked the eight to nine week camp, especially for you, Derek to show us of the world. Oh, I nearly had him though. And this could have been, round, yeah, round, this could have been a different conversation, you know. Yeah. But the 20th coronavirus come in, and you know the way the heavyweight mix. Also, say with David is never say never. If the fire's still in the belly, you know, um, my arms are open to him. If they're not. You know, keep cooking that spag bowl. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> David. Keep yeah. cooking that spag bowl. Yeah. Um, and you're working, obviously, Craig Lover as well. Yeah. Um, did you just kind of waiting for a call at this stage? Did you keep him fit? Yeah, you know, it's, it's the same again with Craig. Very, Craig's on the other spectrum of Thomas. Very limited amateur background, 10 amateur fights. But the kid could fight. Yeah. And he can fight. He, you know, really good puncher. But he's sort of learning on the job, which is unfortunate. He's not the biggest ticket seller, but he's got maximum potential. Eddie's given the opportunities a couple of times. He's he's fell short, so you know I'll discuss that with his manager, with Tony, see where he's going to go. But he is in the gym and he keeps himself ready. If that phone call comes, stranger things have happened. You know, mm. the Tommy McCarthy's, your Duke Watkins, you know Isaac Chamberlain's. There's fights out there for him. Yeah, what's the kid last week, Michael Lau? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, this, you know, the, yeah, yeah. everyone needs a dance partner, so, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's there for and the I kids. I guess uh, uh, him not having an, uh, an unbeaten record isn't so bad when you say he's learning on the job. Yeah, so yeah. it's not the be all and end all, you know, it's like he's a work in progress and yeah. the record doesn't really matter. Yeah, do you know what, Dad, and I wish that was across the whole of sport. Of yeah, boxing. true. Do, you I know, think, you know? do you not think it's changing a little bit, though? I think there's so many opportunities happening for, for <laughs> guys and girls that don't, have these yeah. unbeaten records. Yeah. I mean, it's encouraging. Mm. Yeah, you know, it's it's like Katie. Not everyone can be a Katie Taylor of the world. Not everyone can be a Floyd Mayweather. If the best fight the best, and they put a fantastic fight up, I don't think, you know, no one's really bothered mm. about the winner yeah. or the loser it's part of the fighters. It's, it, if they know they're going to get work again and go again, it's good for, not so good for the coaches, mm. f for us, but, you know, it's to it's give your heart attacks 50, 50 <laughs> consistently. But, you know, it's, yeah, the fans love it and that's what they want. And, you know, I think it's sort of go. I think Eddie's pushing it for that way, which is, yeah. it, in my opinion, it's, it's, it's for the good of the sport. I think it's like you can take yeah. one uh, a leaf out of MMA's and UFC's books. They all just get in with each other, don't they? Yeah. Just, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, one one woman that kept me sane during the six-month lockdown because I live on my own. Molly McCann rang me virtually every day to yeah. check up on us. What a legend! Yeah. I know you do a lot of work with her. Yeah. She's got great hands. I feel yeah. like she's somebody that may make the switch to boxing at some point. Wouldn't bet against it, would you? Oh no. Well, you know, I've I've worked a lot with Molly. Chris, she's a fantastic talent. Yeah. And what a lot of people do not know, she was ABA champion. Yeah. So the talent is there, and I worked with her for a couple of fights. It was a Brazilian woman, so it was literally the game plan was stand up, yeah. and he, she schooled the girl really. And I was like, uh, you know, Tony, make the phone call to Eddie. <laughs> type of thing, you know, she be a, she would be a force. That's now done. Yeah, yeah, that but, is now done, um, surely. But she's a, um, a fantastic talent, Molly. Really, and you Down know, I will not be shocked if she turns to the sport of boxing. Mm. That'd be great to have you yeah. in, in the yeah. bubble here. With we us had a, well. didn't we, on before? Yeah, we did for, for Smith Ryder. So, yeah, yeah. yeah fantastic. Well, listen, uh, Joe, um, we don't want to keep you because I know you've got to get over to the venue yeah, soon. All the best. Good to see you. Uh, fantastic, best, mate. Uh, thanks good care, mate. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Joe. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Thank Cheers. You. Uh, well, from the first fight to the main event, and our lady next joins us uh, knows Katie Taylor better than anybody in the world. She is built stronger than others. Her hands crafted of granite and stone. The spirit and courage of the lion. She's made the ring her home. Cast from the shadow of the Wicklow Mountains, which are faintly kissed by the rich sea air. Trained for war, she heads into battle to paint her canvas with poetry and flair. Softly spoken, but beautiful in brutality. An artist with a predatory bite. She treasures three things most of all. Her family, her faith, her fight. Ireland's incredible sporting icon, Katie Taylor. She's a once in a generation talent. Six European titles, five world amateur gold medals, Olympic gold, 11 world title victories. Katie Taylor is an Unquestionable, undisputed, a 
achieving the impossible is in her DNA. A champion who reigns with supremacy, rules the world, but made in Bray. This is, uh, thank you so much. She's a revelation who's transformed her craft. She never gives up, she never gives in. No room for failure, no room to be ordinary. Her only habit is to win. So, so pleased to welcome Katie's mum, uh, Bridget. Thanks for sitting yeah, through thank all you. that and for, uh, for joining us. Um, for I imagine if, if you get any nerves or anxiety, this is the point where they start to kick on, on, on fight day. Is that fair? 100%, yeah. yeah. You don't look like it, though. No, I hide it well. <laughs> I hide really it relaxed. well, yeah. It's yeah, like the duck under water, you know. It looks calm <laughs> on the top. But it's, and the legs yeah, are shivering. The paddling, yeah, paddling, paddling, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, even after all these years, uh, I guess the stakes are so high these days. There's so much at stake for, for Katie. Does that mm. change anything? Or is the, the fear and the concern you have just... As a, as a mother for, for a daughter? No, the nerves don't change, um, regardless of where she's fighting or who she's fighting. It's the, always the top level. Just, feel, <laughs> just up here. Just feels the same. It's kind of like, um, this must be what it feels like to have a stroke kind of situation. <laughs> so yeah, that's usually most of the time how I feel. <laughs> An ambulance on standby Thank somewhere, you. yeah. Yeah, oh, but man. yeah, it's it's hard. Yeah, yeah. Have you always gone to all of our fights? Yes. Amateur, pro, every, yes. all of them. Yes, most of them in the amateurs. Most of our major titles, um, title fights, I've been to. So yeah. Wow. My mum couldn't do it. Yeah. She went to yeah. one. I think it was a Commonwealth Games final. That was it. Yeah. Congrats. She'd just be walking around the venue, outside the venue, on their phone, waiting for the phone call. Yeah. Part, part yeah. Of me wonders whether, uh, I guess, she, I don't know what I would feel like. I haven't got kids, but. I guess part of it, your mum's always thinking, if I can't see it, it can't affect me. But then I guess if you can see what's happening, you've got an element of control there. Yeah. And at least you know where she is and how she is, and you can see everything, right? Is that, is yeah, that yeah, because the couple of the fights that I that I, maybe I wasn't at, and you know, you're waiting for the phone call. Yeah. Um, so you don't know what's worse. And I think, yeah, there is some sort of level of control if you're seeing what's happening, but waiting for the phone call is, you know, can be as bad, yeah, yeah, you know, of, of how she done, you know, in the amateurs, obviously. Um, but uh, I think I'd rather be there. Yeah, I think yeah. I'd rather. I thought I'd have the radio on. It's a bit of both of them. Oh, seriously, yeah. 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 <laughs> you haven't got to watch it, but you can hear it. Yeah, oh, Stella oh, yeah. seriously. Yeah. Oh, okay. um, was she always one of those sort of highly coordinated children? Like from, from very young, could you see, okay, she's going to have a natural aptitude for, for sport of some sort? A hundred percent, yeah. Yeah, from the time she was six or seven, she could drill a football. Really? You know, she was... She, every year she won school races, you know. Um, I, I think for her sport was a way of communicating. Um, she was a very quiet um, child, grown up very shy. And uh, yeah, so I think sport was a, a means of her kind of communicating. It was her way of yeah. you know, expressing, herself. expressing herself, yeah, right. yeah. You see that with geniuses, don't you? Yeah. yeah. You know, they can be very quiet and unassuming, but yeah. that's their way of, like you say, expressing themselves. Yeah, very Offering competitive. It. She was always really competitive, um, regardless of what she'd done. You know, if you were playing a game of cards, Katie wanted to win. Um, she didn't like losing. Honestly, <laughs> he, he's like that. He's, <laughs> really? He's like, yeah, 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 everything. Yeah, everything. Yeah. Oh. It's, yeah, it's I nearly threw the controller at the TV in that room. Yeah, he beat me at yeah. FIFA. Yeah, yeah, happy. yeah. Oh yes, we get that. Yeah. <laughs> but I guess you've got to have it, you know, in an individual sport like mm -hmm. this, where the aim of the game is to hurt your opponent more than they hurt you, basically. Yeah, you know? yeah, definitely. It's definitely a good trait, competitiveness. Mm. You know, yeah. you don't get too far without it. No, um, I guess one thing she would have sacrificed a lot growing up is what you would call a normal teenager's life because she started mm. at 12 and that's the point where you start to sort of like have proper friends and then you start going out mm. in your teenage years I, i'm mm. guessing she didn't do any of that really no um there was no 21st birthday parties there was no debs um but it was something that she i, I think all of my family were they're not kind of into too much having too much attention drawn to them mm. you know they are quite laid back and quiet and i don't think that was ever part of her um, I, I don't think she feels like it was a sacrifice, you know. Um, and as well, I think when you want to be great at anything, you know, I, I think, you know, you can go out and, and have all these experiences and end up just being mediocre mm. at what you're doing. And I don't think that was ever something that she wanted to be. I think greatness in many ways does involve sacrifice. It involves obsession, you know. It? Yeah. yeah, and greatness is what I heard Katie mm. say at the press conference. And I, mm. I, honestly, I'm so impressed with all she's achieved mm. and how well she's boxed in the past. She's still saying on that stage, 
mm. having achieved all of that, mm. there's more to come from yeah. it. And, and for me, that represents mm. greatness. When you've achieved all of that, mm. and still you that. still believe as an individual mm. there's more to give, I mean, that, that, that's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, she's always saying the best is yet to come, you know, and I've got to look at it thinking, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have no more room. A perfectionist. I have no more room on the shelves with the trophies. <laughs> I know. But, yeah. um, but no, it's, it's, a great, it's a great way to be, isn't it? Oh, you know, absolutely. it really is. Yeah, yeah. Um, we, I think, probably got very lucky in that we were closer than just about anyone apart from the referee to, to uh, the Delphine Pursuit fight in New York. We sat on one of those little fold-out flaps in the barrier that I think mm. were meant for photographers, but we, yeah. we put an arse cheek on both and, uh, <laughs> yeah. and, we, and we saw that. Obviously, a very difficult fight to watch, yeah. even as, a, even as a, a kind of a fan. It was difficult because it was so attritional. Yeah. Imagine for you, one of, one of the most difficult fights you, you've watched, surely, that one. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, we knew from the get-go that Pursuit was probably probably the greatest champion in terms of the, the belts. I think she was just, you know, a, a really awkward style, a great engine. Oh, um, relentless, I, I, yeah. or relentless. And I remember her brother um, speaking to her, Katie's brother speaking to her um, in the room on the day of the fight when we went up to her and he had said to me, you're going to lose rounds in this fight. And I think that's something maybe that people are not used to with Katie, you know, they, 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 they look at her and they think, you know, oh, she's going to just drive people down. And um, we definitely knew it was going to be a tough fight from the get-go. Mm. Um, and I think sometimes people get a, got a little bit, you know, you can get a little bit shocked maybe when you're seen or maybe being overwhelmed in certain rounds. Mm. Or, But as I said, the fight was over 10 rounds, not over four, not yeah. over three rounds. It was over 10 rounds. And um, I had Katie up around in, in the fight. Um, and I, I thought she lost the last round. And, and there, was, there were rounds yeah. where I did... 100% thought she lost the rounds, but um, but I felt she did enough to win the fight. What did she feel after that? How was she in the sort of immediate days after that fight? Do you I, think? I think initially for her, I think she said from the first round, she didn't feel her legs were great. Right. And she knew she needed her legs in the fight. She yeah. did look a little flat, I think, yeah. by her very high standards. Yes, to say that. Yeah, 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 100%. And I think she did feel that. Um, and I think the fact that you can go in and be flat from the first bell, and find a way, you know, it'll, it'll just tell you the makeup of her, you know, um, and I think that that's the thing where there's grit in her, you know, mm. there is a warrior kind of in her where she just yeah. finds a way, she has that will to win and she will go into the trenches, uh, she, you'll have to drag her out of the ring, basically, mm -hmm. she'll never give it away and uh, and I think you kind of saw that in, in those, those Yeah, fights. and the return, obviously, you know, she, yeah. you see how tough she was in that fight and then on the, yeah, on the yeah. return you can see as well, you know, it was another tough fight but one she won clearer. Yeah, definitely, uh, definitely. Eyes. And I think her, 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 her leg movement was, was, you know, much different and mm. she kind of was mm. using the ring better. And But, uh, yeah, and most people probably wouldn't have even taken that rematch but she no. wanted it, you know, she yeah. did want it, so, yeah. yeah. As a as a mum, looking back on everything she's achieved so far, if you could pick one memory to to keep and to play on repeat, what's the memory that makes you the most proud and that Good really question. anything that stands out? I mean, there's so much, but there there is so much. I suppose it's hard to maybe not look at the Olympics, you know, yeah. because that really was a, a dream fulfilled for her. You know, that was an incredible moment. And that noise. Um, yeah, and oh. I mean the whole story of the build up to the Olympics. I mean, Katie was training for an Olympic Games that wasn't there mm. as a child, which is it's crazy. Like, yeah. there, it just wasn't there. There was nobody, they, they just weren't introducing it. We thought it might have come in in Beijing. It didn't, you know, there was huge disappointment. And then you're pressing on and you're training for something that, you know, might never happen. Mm. So when it did happen and then the pressure that was on her, I think that was a really special, incredible moment um, for all the family. Mm. Um, we were buzzing going around London and it was a, <laughs> oh. I mean, we were a, f it's like, it was we magic. Going through the weather was amazing and just, it was the people, yeah. It was amazing, oh, yeah. it was just incredible and walking down the steps into the XL and there was just seas of tricolours. Mm. I mean, you just couldn't, it was you just bonkers. couldn't imagine it. It was crazy, but it, everywhere you went, every street you walked down in London, the flags were up and it was just an incredible, incredible time. I have to say they did an amazing job. And obviously for us, it was the closest we were ever going to get to a, a home games as well. So everyone was able to travel mm, yeah. and, uh, and they did. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was, yeah, it was just amazing. And so, eight years on, here we are, top of the top I of the know. world. Yeah, God, crazy. You must be so proud. Yeah, yeah. It just every yeah. single box has been ticked. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, yeah. I know, completely. And and uh, and we don't take it for granted. We do. It really is a privilege, you know, to be able to be on these shows. And I mean, we were. She was doing, making her debut here 
four years ago, mm. which has flown by too. And um, yeah, so we're blessed. Well, blessed. I tell you what, we're blessed. The honour's yeah, all ours. So to be blessed. rubbing shoulders with you guys ah. and Katie uh, yeah. all week's been fantastic. It yeah. really has. And we've wanted to sort of pick your brain about things and ask you things about her. And I feel like we've, we've got the, the, the answers that we wanted, haven't we? So it's been <laughs> yeah. lovely to yeah. speak to you. Yeah. And, uh, and by the way, Darren, I have heard you sing and you really are awful. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I agree. I yeah, am. Yeah. I am. You, oh. need, you do need the enthusiasm. I shout. <laughs> yes, there's a lot of dancing and hand movement. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Forgive I win me. the crowd Please that way. Me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't apologise for that. Yeah, so he doesn't need encouraging. You just, uh, you're just very lucky. I didn't take my top off. Uh, <laughs> then then yeah. I uh, emptied the room. Uh, that's the icing uh, on the cake. Uh, Bridget, listen, thank you yeah, so much. Thank, thank you. Wish you all the very best tonight. Enjoy the action. See you later. All right. Thank you. Well, make sure you tune in to all the action tonight. It starts Facebook six o'clock for Tom Whitaker Hart, then Sky Sports uh, across the platforms at seven o'clock. And we'll be back next week when Conor Ben makes a major step up in his career. He faces Sebastian Formella. We will see you same time next week. Enjoy the action tonight. Katie Taylor against Miriam Gutierrez. <laughs>